Chatteractcoach.com. Fixating the eye during capsule rexus creation. This is an important technique. This is a patient who's less than cooperative. And because of systemic issues, the patient's unable to receive more systemic sedation. So we're going to use the chopper there through the paracentesis to really fixate and hold the eye still. That prevents the patient from moving the eye so we can do our capsule rexus. And you can see we have a lot of great control. The left hand is holding the eye completely still. The right hand is using the forceps. This is why you need to be able to do a one-handed technique for capsule rexus. The forceps are just held in one hand, and we're done, and that looks great. Now, at this point, the patient's eye is a lot more cooperative, and the patient's able to look at the light and help us fixate. Now, could you have done a different technique? Could you have just switched to a retrobulbar block or subtenon's anesthesia to help give akinesia of the globe? For sure, that would work too. But in this situation, we want the path that's least invasive. And for us, that just means holding the eye with the chopper. Now, once we have two instruments in the eye, phaco probe in the right and chopper on the left, I can just do my regular cataract surgery, and these two instruments provide two-point fixation, so the globe's not going to move anymore. I'll buzz in with the chopper and the phaco probe and split the nucleus, and we can just operate as we normally would. The patient's extraocular muscles are unable to overcome the fixation that I have with two instruments inside the eye. And so this is a lot more comfortable for the patient, and it's also a lot safer for me. So I have, by having two instruments in the eye, that's a very stable environment. So taking out the rest of the cataract here looks pretty good. Now this patient's going to be, um, oh, look at that. Did you see what happened? Yeah, so this patient's not going to be totally cooperative. That's the patient who just woke up, dozed off for a little bit, woke up, and then got startled and moved, and you saw nothing untoward happened. And the reason is, we're resting our hands against the patient's face. Any movement, we move with the patient, and then also, we retract the instruments. When you have that sudden jerky movement from the patient, especially the phaco probe, get the instruments out of the eye. And by retracting those instruments, we were able to prevent any problems from that sudden movement by the patient here. And you can see even more prolonged head movement, patient moving the head around a little bit more. And again, the patient doesn't mean to do this. The patient is in fact not even aware that she's doing all of this. And with the intravenous sedation, which is primarily midazolam, this patient's not going to even remember any of the surgery. So hang in there, take your time, be a very safe surgeon, and... Um, Help the patient out as best you can. So there's a fishing up cortex removal. My technician's loading the lens for me to just uh, minimize the amount of time we have to be here inside the eye operating. And we'll polish up the capsule. That looks pretty good. Now, in a case like this where the patient has a higher risk of moving around and higher risk of potential complications, you just do a limited amount of capsule polishing. No need to go crazy over this. And that looks pretty good. And then the lens here is going to be a single piece acrylic lens. We're going to put it right in the capsule bag. And that looks like a really nice capsule rexus too. So here's filling up the bag. Again, being very careful when you inject this. A sudden movement here could cause that cannula to go right through the capsule. A nice strong fill of viscoelastics. There's plenty there. Here fixating the eye, keeping the, in the injector tip going. And nice and easy, nice and controlled. Get that lens carefully in the capsule bag. So be cautious with your patients and only the ones that you know ahead of time don't tolerate the procedure as well or won't tolerate it as well or can't get enough sedation or switch to an ultra technique, retrobulbar block or a peribulbar block, subtenon's anesthesia. And then learn to use just one hand to do the capsular axis. That's a technique that's going to come in handy for you. Also, check out our website, cataractcoach.com. Got a lot of great material. We appreciate our thousands of YouTube followers. But you're missing out if you're not seeing all the great material on cataractcoach.com. Check it out.